So, so this is the point. I am very curious about one thing, being a, a psychology student uh, and knowing that you have a PhD in social psychology. Yes, I'm not wrong. Mm. So how did uh, your PhD in, in social psychology influence the course of your research in business? Uh, that's a good question. Um, my, my PhD in social psychology looked at uh, a phenomenon called social contagion, how ideas and behaviors spread through social networks. And this is more traditional social networks rather than necessarily online social networks. And uh, particularly looked about how suicidal behavior um, spreads through social networks. So knowing somebody who's suicidal or hearing about somebody who's, who has attempted suicide, how that can impact on people propensity to commit suicide. And so I looked at the language around suicide and words that are cues that can actually, when you hear certain positive cues, that actually cue the thoughts of suicide, justify the idea of suicide, and give a rationale for, for doing it. So in, through my PhD, I put together some recommendations for how to communicate, how the media should communicate suicide to make it less contagious. Because what we know is that whenever there's a a big front page media story about some celebrity committing suicide, then suicide rates jump by about uh, by about ten percent in the two weeks following. So there is this copycat contagion effect. So uh, my research was looking at you know, how what sort of guidelines can we give media to stop that contagious spread of ideas and behaviour. Now, from a business perspective what you want to do is rather than stop contagious ideas spreading, you want to create contagious ideas, whether they be whether they be advertising ideas, or whether they be product ideas. And you want to you want to drive the adoption of your product through but through a process of contagion, through imitation, through social networks. And so it's basically my business work is simply reverse engineering the work that I've done um, on, on suicide rather than trying to make an idea less contagious. How can you make it more contagious? How can you facilitate the spread through social networks? And in doing that, I actually put together a, a little tool, um, web-based uh, market research tool, that basically plays an association game. So if I say uh, intervistato, what comes to mind around intervistato? What are the words you associate with it? And you collect those associations on the internet. And so the more associations that people have, you create a tag cloud of top associations. And then you can use those to embed in your communications, specifically positive association, positive words, and to make connections. And that actually helps an idea become more uh, uh, more contagious. And if you want to stop intervistato from being contagious, you actually start using negative words um, and you don't use the positive words. That's, that's very interesting, but uh, how, how can you justify it scientifically? Is there any kind of study or research being done during these months, years, about um, about this? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge. I mean, my research for to start with. Um, so, but there's a whole body of research um, around this idea of social contagion, looking at the spread of ideas and behaviors through social networks. So, and there's a lot of. Uh, experimental studies that show that once you're exposed to particular ideas, you're more likely to adopt them and pass them on under cert certain uh, certain circumstances. So, uh, my research looked at field experiments. For it did a field experiment, for example, looking at Kurt Cobain, uh, the Nirvana singer who. Um, we think he committed suicide, and whether exposure to the suicide, his suicide note that actually is available online, whether that actually primed people's minds and made them. Th think those people seeing it, whether they themselves would be more likely or less likely to entertain the idea of suicide themselves. So there are formal, formal scientific studies showing that this, this, this social contagion, this spread of ideas and behaviors through social networks does indeed happen. And the tools we can use to actually facilitate it, accelerate it, or if we want to stop it, stop it. Excellent. So um, you started with uh, this kind of research on suicide, and I think that's um, one thing you did for the Ministry of Defense, if I'm not wrong. 
Yeah, we published it. We worked with um, some. Uh, we worked with with number of organisations looking at how to uh, taking it a little bit further because suicide is related to suicide terrorism, and we took uh, the research that I did with 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 um, a colleague Shawan Atia. We actually wrote an article saying that the way the media was treating suicide terrorism as this in a sensationalistic fashion in using the media is likely that copycat suicide attacks. Uh, would occur, and I was based in London at the time, and we wrote this article in the Psychologist saying, "Whoa, the way that that suicide terrorism is going to be communicated, it's likely to create a contagion effect. There's likely to be some uh, some, some hyper, uh, you know, a, a copycat incident." And then uh, on the seventh of the seventh, there was the uh, the terrorist attack in London just after we published the article, and so we started talking with uh, authorities about you know how we how it's possible uh, or the potential for actually moderating how you communicate terrorist attacks in the media to make it less less likely that copycat uh, attacks will follow. Okay, so how did this kind of research actually? Um really bring you to to talk about business what what brought you to do that really well I, I think it's a simple matter of well I've spent four years of my life working about how to make ideas less contagious and so in doing that you have to understand what makes them contagious and so the I, the idea behind that was well it's there is there is Money to be made um, in actually working with companies who want to make um, ideas more more contagious, and so I launched a uh, uh, an online market research uh, company called Brain Juicer with, uh, with with a partner John Kieran, and uh, which is now you know a relatively large uh, market research company that actually helps advertisers uh, to understand the key these these association maps, these mental association maps. What are the key positive and negative associations? Around a brand or a concept, and how they can actually uh, use it to um, use this map to prime the minds of consumers to to trigger positive associations, which then positive associations will make create choice shaping associations in their minds, which then will lead to to purchase. So, to, to, to short answer your question, because. The business world has a need for understanding what makes ideas contagious, and my research helped that. So, um, can you tell me where we are? What's the state of the art uh, about social commerce at the moment? Well, social commerce is slightly, yeah, so it's slightly different to where the sort of my background, which has been looking at the spread of ideas through social networks. Now, if you want to look at the spread of a product through social networks, one key part of that is buying the product. So, if ideas, behaviours spread through a process of diffusion through social networks, then it just seems obvious that you should be a, allow people within social networks, particularly online social networking platforms, to actually purchase products. Because if that's the way that products spread, I mean, advertisers like to think, hey, we do a great big ad campaign. But pretty much all we know about how products diffuse is they diffuse through a process of word of mouth and imitation, i.e. through social and social networks. So it just is a logical evolution of commerce to allow people not only to spread ideas through social networks, but allow people to buy products in social networks. And so um, you've had this big uh, evolution in social media called social commerce, which is simply the fusion of uh, social media and, and e-commerce. So effectively allowing people to buy in social networks or where allowing people to connect where they buy on, on websites. So you've seen all the, probably the Facebook connects, all these Facebook connects and like buttons on, that allow people to, to connect with each other where they buy. And that allows them to make smarter shopping decisions. And it also allows retailers and brands to sell more because people tend to listen to each other more than they do to ads. So you asked about you know, the state of the art. Was that I think there is this, I think what we're seeing, we're seeing two things evolving in social commerce, two big areas. One is so-called F-commerce, Facebook commerce, where allowing you to 
put stalls in social networking sites such as Facebook um, so people on a tab or in the news feed can actually buy directly from uh, for, for, uh, within a social network without having to go to another e-commerce site. So for example, uh, Warner Brothers and Par um, Paramount allow people to either buy movie tickets or get live streaming on Facebook pay, uh, on, from a Facebook page and, and pay for it. And the other side of the Facebook commerce area or F-commerce area is actually connecting up e-commerce websites to Facebook. So people can basically shop with their social graph. You can shop with your friends. You can like stuff. You can send stuff. You can, you can, uh, you can have conversations with your friends via Facebook um, on, a, on, on, on a website. So that's one area. The whole F-commerce area is has really taken off, and uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg says, you know, he, he had to guess the next big thing um, in the digital world is 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 social commerce, and of course, he's at the epicenter of it. You know, one in ten humans now are on Facebook, so it is just the biggest place to to, to sell stuff and to and to market stuff. So you've got that area, and then the other area, you've got this whole group buy area, such so all these sites that allow p consumers to come together and collectively use their, their collective power to actually negotiate and get better deals on prices. So you're seeing the, the rise of Groupon and, um, and Living Social and hundreds, literally hundreds of other platforms that allow consumers to come together and get really great, great prices. So it's allowing people to connect online and just through the sheer numbers saying, well, okay, we'll buy a hundred of these, um, but we want a price that is significantly less. And you're getting, you're getting middlemen in here, brokers um, such as uh, Groupon that are facilitating this process of, of consumer power. Okay, so... Um they're definitely taking off um, social commerce, uh, S-commerce, and commerce as well. They're all taking off, but it seems like they have a very small, they, they represent a small part of the market, actually. Do you think that the techniques, the, the state at which they are now is the final one, or there's going to be some more evolution? Oh no! It's, 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 it's always evolving. I mean, if you had asked 15 years ago uh, whether e-commerce would have taken off, people have said no. It's a completely mad idea. People want to go to stores, and things just evolve. You know, technology is evolving so fast. And I think you, know, you mentioned m-commerce. I think m-commerce. There's no social aspect, particularly towards mobile commerce at the moment. But what we're seeing is this this huge trend of everything coming together into the the palm of consumers' hands, either through tablets or through uh, through handsets, and so I think mobile commerce will take take over. And so I think what you will will start to see is this uh, new technologies that of a convergence between social that allows people shoppers to make smarter decisions by asking their friends, getting feedback, talking, uh, looking at reviews. Mobile that allows them to actually. The, for, for that social intelligence that they've got to be mobile and available and also allow them to, to purchase and buy. It becomes almost, uh, you know, their, 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 their mobile brain is, is what the mobile's coming. And related to that, location-based uh, services, because your mobile through a GPS knows exactly where you are. And because of that, and because, uh, and because of that, you can actually get contextually relevant content, uh, content where you are, where, when, when you are. So I think those, these three things, we're only just seeing the beginning of how this is, is beginning to, to, uh, to, 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 to come together. So the short answer is, you know, social commerce is very new. It's got very low penetration. Uh, people are still not shopping with their social graph, still shopping on social networks is, uh, is still quite seemed quite mad to most people it's very very new but uh, but i think it's going to uh, become more and more mainstream at least the not maybe not facebook commerce or group buy as we know it but this idea of actually allowing people to shop with their social intelligence to be do be smart consumers using social technology mobile technology and location based technology